Today I'm going to go over an overview of how to use the Flare Pro 2 along with some tips and tricks to get the best results with it. I'm also going to answer the question on whether or not the Commandant grinder is a sufficient enough grinder to use with the Flare Pro 2. This is designed more for pour overs, but we're going to try and pull some shots on it today. So first off, I want to say thank you for tuning in to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose the coffee gear you want to brew with at home. You'll find a lot of reviews and comparisons on this channel. If you could do a few things to really help me out as I grow this YouTube channel, that would be to like this video and subscribe to my channel. That really helps push these videos out for more people to see. I also put affiliate links in the description below, which will be links to all of the products that I use, and I'll make a slight amount of commission at no extra charge for you. So if you're looking at picking up some gear, please use those so I can fund this channel more and get more gear to review for you. I also have a Patreon account. You're more than welcome to support me on that. I do a few giveaways of some of the gear that I review to Patreon supporters only. So if you want a chance to win some free stuff, that is a great place to go. I also have an Instagram account called Kabeen's Coffee Corner. You're more than welcome to follow me there. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We got the Flare Pro 2. It comes with a nice travel case. Um, and I want to go with a few things that you're going to get right off the box and kind of explain what they are. First off, the flare comes in two main different pieces, the top part and the bottom part. In the bag, you will find a Allen bolt and an Allen key. And basically what you do is you take this bottom part in, slide this in, and there is a slot for that screw to go in. And the purpose for that is to give it more stability when you're brewing basically all the time at home. If this is sitting on your countertop or you're pulling it out in a cover and you want to have it and you're leaving it in a fixed position all the time, I'd highly recommend putting it in that screw. However, we're going to be brewing without that screw today because I typically put mine back in the travel box. Um, so that's kind of how we're doing it today. So you can safely brew without the screw, but the screw is in there. We have a little piece of rubber in there. And what that piece of rubber is, is it goes either right here at the end of the lever or on the bottom. It's a replacement um, rubber piece because those do fall out occasionally. We have an additional O-ring which will go inside the pressure gauge when you take it apart once you wear out one of those. Uh, we have the two-in-one drip tray. Um, so it's a stainless steel drip tray. Uh, so that just simply sits on. Top there, nothing special to it. We got a few pieces. We have the brew head. We have the portafilter basket. Um, this is very similar to a VST basket. It's not a VST basket, but it's made at the same factory that does VST baskets. So it's a really, really nice precision basket that you get with this. Um, I believe you can hold like 16 to 24 grams, give or take, in this. Um, don't quote me on that. We have the shower screen. A common question on the shower screen is which way do you have it? Do you have the, in my eyes, the pretty holes, um, like the ones that look bigger on the bottom? Or do you have the ones that look, um, yeah, it's just the question is which one do you put? It doesn't really matter, talking with flair, it doesn't matter which way you put it. For the sake of it, what I typically do is I put the prettier side down onto the coffee grounds. So this small, the smaller circles versus the bigger circles um, will be on top, the, small, the bigger circles will be on the bottom. Um, the reason for that is if you look at a shower head on a machine, a commercial grade machine, it will kind of look more like this. So that's the only reason I do it. Doesn't really matter, but for the sake of it, that's what it is. You have the preheat cap, which simply sits on to the brew head like this. You have a funnel, you have a tamper, and you have a dosing cup, which is not sitting on this counter right now. Um, so you have a few... Quite a few things here. Uh, a couple things you will need in addition to the purchase of your flare is you will need a bag of coffee. You will need a grinder. Um, we'll get more into that in a little bit. You'll need a scale and you will need a way of boiling water. Um, 
there's a lot of different options for all of these. Right now I'm using the Commandante Mark III, so it's a little bit older of a model. It's pretty much the same as the Mark IV. They just made some cosmetic tweaks to it. Um, I have the red clicks in it, and I'm going to be pulling a shot at 17. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, um, that's just a starting point for me. Don't necessarily transfer that grind setting to your grinder. It may not work, and you may need to adjust it more. And then I'm using the Stag EKG Plus kettle. It's a Bluetooth kettle that you can change the temperature of. Um, not necessary for the flare. You don't need this precision spout. Any kettle will do fine. Um, you just need to make sure you boil it. Um, so we're going to start off by the... The first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our brew head and what I like to do is I like to sit it on my kettle. You'll see three holes on the Stag EKG if you have one of them. You can figure out a way to put this on pretty much any kettle. And what you're going to do is you're going to just slide it over those three holes and it will heat this up. And then I'm going to take this cap, I'm going to take this little, little piece here, set it right there. I'm going to set it in the cap and I'm going to put the cap on right there and that's going to put water in there you may see a pool of water on the kettle itself but that is fine that's how i preheat this because you want to get these parts as hot enough as possible so i got 18 grams all ready weighed out all right now that i got those picked up off the floor what i do is i flip my commandant slightly to the side and i'll just take it and it flips perfectly in there all the beans go without spilling or popping out We'll screw this on, and we'll get to grinding. I'm going to speed this up and cut this out. All right, we are done grinding. So what I'm going to do is I just simply knock the commandant on my hand a little bit to shake up some of the grounds. You will take your portafilter basket. The nice thing about the Flare Pro 2 is it has this flat basket so it sits straight on the counter perfectly well. Some people like to use a tamping mat just to protect their counter a little bit more. It's not necessary, but it is a potential purchase that you could add later on down the road. But it's not near as important as the grinder or um, the scale or anything like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this fits perfectly on there. So I'm going to basically put the entire thing together and just simply flip it. Give it a little knock a couple times to even it out. A grinder is important and getting a good quality grinder is important. Um, with espresso you need to make fine tweaks um, which is one of the concerns about the Commandante. It has big steps from click to click is the way you do the settings on there and when you have those big steps you can't really fine tweak your espresso and change it by a couple seconds in the output as you could some other grinders that have this thing called a stepless adjustment which means you can fine tune it exactly how you want. So with grinders typically you get the better value in hand grinders because you don't have to pay for the motor or things like that. They also have better reliability and less parts so there's a lot less that can go wrong with them. Um, so something like a Brasa Encore will probably get you started with this but it's not going to give you the best results that you possibly could get with it. Something like a Barazza Siete 270W I or, two, or 270 would be a lot better and more comparable with this. And niche, niche Zero, the DF Turn, there's a lot of different grinders out there. I'm going to link a few of my recommendations for some of the cheaper options in the comments or in the description below so you can find some of those for yourself. And I'm going to link some hand grinders, which will be a little bit cheaper, and I'm going to link some electric grinders as well. The next thing that was a very, very beneficial step to it, not necessary, but beneficial, is WDT, which stands for Weiss Distribution Technique. And basically it's a series of needles where you break up the clumps. So this is a 3D printed part that was um, sent to me as a part of a contest that I won. And I'm simply just going to insert this into the coffee grounds. And I'm just going to spin it a little bit. So I'm going to go through cleaning up all the grounds in there and try to make the bed of the coffee grounds as even as possible. Uh, another way to do this is by simply using guitar strings and putting them in a cork or um, for the longest time is I bent a bobby pen so it had two um, spots that were a little bit further apart and I would simply um, just stir it with the bobby pin until I broke up all the clumps. So now that that is a perfectly even bed, I want you to take a quick look at it right there. I'm going to try not to spill it when I do this. Um, so it's a pretty even bed. I don't see any known clumps. I'm going to take the tamper that is included. This is a nice stainless steel tamper. You don't get this with some expensive machines. Uh, I've had a $2,000 machine come through my house and it came with a very plastic and cheap 
tamper that didn't even fit the portafilter filter very well. So this is a very good tamper that is included with it. So basically, you're not going to aim to put a ton of pressure on here. And you're going to put it directly over the grounds and you are going to press as even as possible. Uh, one of the guys at Flare, he likes to take four fingers and simply press it evenly on each side so the tamper is as even as possible. Um, this will take a lot of practice to get the best results, but your goal is to be as level as possible in there. And there we have it. The tamping is complete. And looking at it, it is pretty level um, using the four finger method right there. Next, this all is going to be pretty hot, but you're going to take this top piece off here. You're going to have your piece of metal and it is good to simply grab a rag and probably dry this off just a little bit. But this is scolding hot because you're basically setting this on boiling steam. So I'm going to put that pretty side down and you can slide it over and usually it hits pretty perfectly right there. Some people like to tamp it. I don't like to tamp it. I don't know why. Um, personal preference, I guess. You're going to then take your brew head and even this rubber part when you do this method is still pretty hot. So be careful not to burn yourself. And you're going to put this on to the porta filter just like so. And there's some water sitting on the top of it that will slide off. So I, I dumped mine in the sink a little bit, dried off. And we have this at boiling water here. And what you're also going to want to do is you're going to want to preheat your cup because if you don't preheat your cup, instantly the temperature of your espresso is going to drop. I should have done that a little earlier. That was my fault on that. A lot of things, a lot of steps, easy to forget. So you're going to lift up your handle. You're going to insert brew head with the porta filter attached. And this is your pressure gauge and stem, which I forgot to mention. You're going to be aiming to be in anywhere between five to nine bars of espresso. You can see that perfect part there. Um, I typically like to be more around six. Personal preference. People have their own opinions on that. So please try everything until you get what you want. Now that this is heated up, you're gonna to wanna to discard your hot water. And now as you touch the cup, it is pretty warm to the touch, which is exactly what you want. You're gonna take your water and you're gonna fill it all the way up. There's a little ridge on the inside and you want your water to just go past that ridge. If it is underneath of that ridge, what happens is uh, you will cause air bubbles, which is not a good thing. All right, so mine's just a little past this ridge and you're gonna add your stem and pressure gauge, and you're gonna to wanna to get that pressure gauge facing you in a good way. You are gonna then turn on your scale, make sure it's placed underneath of your cup, not touching any edges. This is the Kyle Lunar scale. It's um, a very expensive scale that's not necessary, but I do encourage you to get a decent scale. You can get those for 10, 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, so you're gonna start your timer, and since we put 18 in, we are going for 36 out, you can pre-infuse for a couple bars if you need to. I did not this time. And I typically aim for about 40 seconds with the machine. The reason why you do 40 seconds on this one versus maybe 25 on the other is because the coffee, the water is going through the grounds at a different rate um, because of the di diameter of the porta filter. This one is, I believe, like a 46 versus the standard 58 that you'd get on a machine. So that will affect your times a little bit. All right, and I'm at 37 out at 40 seconds. And one of the little hacks that I love that I saw from somebody else is they take their preheat cap and they slide it underneath of it so then they don't have to clean their drip tray. Um, and it collects all the little drips there. And now that you look at this great shot, nice thick crema, um, nice tiger striping, uh, that was at 17 on the Commandant. This just looks like a very incredible shot that this pulls out. So there's a lot of things you can do between adjusting your pressure and flow rate. Um, so you can, something with this machine that doesn't happen with a lot of other machines is the fact that you can control it so many things about it. Um, it does have some not so great things about the heat and the preheating and some of that stuff is a little finicky that you don't get with a machine with a boiler in it, but you can control all the pressure. You can control how long you want to pre-fuge, what bar you want to pre-infuse at, um, and uh, how many bars of pressure you want to pull at. If you want to pull at eight, you can do that. If you want to pull at eight and then back off in 10 seconds and go to six, you can. Um, so the possibilities of the way you can pull shots is so incredible with this machine. And that's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite brewers out there. So let's go ahead and try it. So it's a little acidic, a little more than I would like to, but still not bad. Um, that means I just need to adjust my grind setting a little bit. It's nothing with the flare. But overall, this is a very sweet shot. This is an Ethiopian. It's very sweet. It's very fruited. It's uh, pretty well-rounded, just like a little bit more acidic 
side than I'd want, but still a very good drinkable shot. I would like to adjust it a little bit more, but I don't think I will be able to get it exactly how I want with this particular grinder because it's aimed more toward pour overs than it is for espresso. This is definitely one of my favorite machines that I've used. Um, it's so travel friendly. I've pulled shots in the hotel with these things. I've pulled it on the side of a canyon um, at a national park. This is the possibilities but this is endless and what I love about this is this really gets you into espresso at such a cheap price point. Um, if you want to basically find a machine that pulls better shots you're spending thousands of dollars um, to get the controllability that you have with this machine. It's just a very incredible quality of shots that you get for such a small package, such a small price point. Um, it takes a little bit more work, a little bit of effort, but a shot from this to a machine doesn't really, it doesn't really take much longer than this. Um, so basically at the end, you're just gonna wanna purge that excess water. Or honestly, sometimes I just lift it up and I pull off this part and then I dump this little excess water into the sink and I just set this next to the sink and then I clean it after work um, in the evening time when that thing cools down. Um, so I think the cleanup rate is pretty easy on this. Um, but overall, this is a great machine. If you have any questions about it, um, please let me know and uh, I will let you know. But so I'll let you know the answers and um, thank you so much for watching.